Oh, Sly 2. This is the third time in total that I've made this video. I did one similar like this in 2018 and 2019 regarding the coin route and treasure route and gadget routing optimizations and stuff and here I am again. So let's take a brief history recap of the Sly 2 any percent coin routes and gadget routes. So as we all know, in Sly 2 you are required to obtain two different power-ups for Sly. Paraglider by the end of episode 5 and Alarm Clock by the end of episode 7. Both of these cost 600 coins each, so that means 1200 coins in total. And back in the early days of Sly 2 speedrunning, we used to not get any additional gadgets on top of these two required ones. So in the run we just tried to scramble together 1200 coins by the end of episode 7 to buy those two and uh, that's it. Even though we always knew that gadgets like Adrenaline Burst for Bentley, Stealth Slide for Sly and Turnbuckle Launch for Murray could potentially save time, we didn't know how much they saved time, and uh, runners back then thought that obtaining those power-ups would lose more time than what they would save in coin farming and treasure obtaining. Because taking any treasures back then was just so slow, and treasure and coin routes were not optimized at all, so adding additional gadgets was not viable. Uh, then, in early 2016, the first additional gadget was routed in, it was Turnbuckle Launch for Murray. The reason for that probably was that it was so cheap, it was only 400, worth only 400, and it obviously saved a lot of time in episode 3 in particular, and also some time here and there in later episodes. Then the route pretty much stayed the same, two treasures, and Turnbuckle Launch as the only additional gadget was the route. The treasure routing got optimized a bit in the process, but still, when we came to the summer of 2019, over three years later, we were still only doing the turnbuckle launch route. Then, in the summer of 2019, everything exploded when the potential of adrenaline burst and stealth slide were realized. First of all, they were discovered to save more time than we initially thought when movement tech like adrenaline burst bomb boosts aka burst boosts were found and stealth slide square boosts were found with stealth slide. Over the course of next several months, many other tricks and skips were found utilizing other additional gadgets like smoke bomb and trigger bomb. All these implementations were made possible by major optimizations in treasure routing. And by the spring of 2020, the route had been solidified for some time and it was following. In episode 1, in Follow Dimitri and after Follow Dimitri, we farm coins and take a treasure, Jade Vase, by utilizing a super jump chain back to the treasure. Doing all this lost 22 seconds in total when comparing to the super jump route and gave around 350 coins. Then we'd buy Trigger Bomb for Disco Demolitions, where it already saved 4 seconds. Trigger Bomb would save around 1 minute and 5 seconds throughout the run. In Episode 2, before going to lower the drawbridge, we would take Burial Urn for 354 coins and 18 seconds of time loss. Then in Battle the Chopper, we would buy Turnbuckle Launch for Murray for 400. Turnbuckle Launch in total saves around the same amount of time as Trigger Bomb these days, so 1 minute and 5 seconds approximately. Then we would delay buying Stealth Slide since we didn't have enough coins for it at the start of episode 3 and buy it after taking Gilded Scepter as Murray after rip off the ruby that gives 447 coins and then we would immediately buy Stealth Slide for 650 coins. Stealth Slide saves around 1 minute and 30 seconds, early Stealth Slide 1 minute and 45 seconds in the any percent run. Then in episode 5 after ghost capture we would take crystal vase as sly that gives 546 coins and immediately after that buy adrenaline burst for bentley which is once again a delayed adrenaline burst you could have also bought it at the start of episode 4 but adrenaline burst costs 1000 coins and that is just not realistically still not affordable at the start of episode 4 or, well, you could buy it, but it doesn't realistically save any time. Adrenaline Burst saves around 1 minute and 40 seconds throughout the run. Early AB would save like 2 minutes and 10. Then after Tank Showdown, we would go to pick up Jeweled Crown as Murray, that gives 652 coins. 
and immediately after that by Paraglider for Sly, and then in episode 7, after Barricade bugging by swapping out the optimal job order to reverse, we would take Jade Decanter, that gives 647 coins as Sly, and buy both Smoke Bomb and Alarm Clock for Episode 7 Operation. Because Smoke Bomb saves like 2 seconds in the operation, and then along with Stealth Slide can be used to skip a cutscene in Episode 8, that saves like 22 seconds. Although the cutscene skip could still be pulled off with just Stealth Slide and Alarm Clock. But now, about 16 months later, in August 2021, after playing this game, coming back to this game for about two weeks, I did some more routing analysis, and on the 22nd of August 2021, a major discovery was found that revolutionized treasure routing for Sly 2. And all these new changes that I'm about to tell you about add up to about 25 seconds of new time save for Sly 2 any percent. The any percent route since 2019 has contained six treasures in total. But now, without further ado, say hello to the seventh treasure in the route. Ming vase. So how on earth would this treasure revolutionize the routing? It's like on the completely opposite side of the map. By default, it looks to be one of the most unoptimal treasures to take in the early game. But in fact, with a technique found on the 22nd, this treasure instantly became the most optimal treasure and most worth treasure to take in the early game, when taking into consideration how much coins it gives, which is 249, and how much it loses time to take. So what was actually found? I found this technique accidentally while playing through episode 6 and practicing all the new stuff, also trying to optimize some treasure routing. And it happened while investigating one of the scariest treasures to take in the whole game, the treasure inside the bear cave. The golden plate, which actually looks completely identical to the collectible plate almost in episode 7. The reason for its scariness is that bears are located nearby and when you're trying to play fast, getting out of the bear cave without taking damage and losing the treasure could be kind of clutch. So what happened was that I got attacked by bear and I hadn't even made it up to the treasure before I got smacked once and then I tried to take the treasure but the bear just killed me. But something happened along the way. I respawned at the safe house and I still had the treasure. And the timer of the treasure kept going from where it left off when I died. So what happened? So when taking a treasure, an animation takes place where the treasure gets relocated on your back. And this animation length is 0.5 seconds. And the treasure will still attach on your back if you take damage during this 0.5 second window. And if you die during that window, the same thing occurs. The treasure will stay on your back even after you respawn. So with this revolutionizing technique, we can take a treasure, die instantly afterwards, and respawn back at the safe house, saving all that time it would take getting the treasure back to the safe house the casual way. If there was a category called all treasures in speedrunning, this technique would save time with numerous plethora of treasures in the game. The only problem here is that Sometimes it's not convenient to die nearby a treasure, and it's particularly challenging for Sly and Murray. But one character that it's not is Bentley. Bentley can kill himself quite easily with his bombs, and doing this trick nearby a treasure with Bentley is literally free. And with Trigger Bomb, this process is even easier, just like the Episode 2 Operation cutscene skip, even though it 
technically doesn't save any time. So I think you can see where I'm going with this Ming vase thing. It's actually Bentley who's gonna take this treasure. And this isn't the only treasure now which is fastest to take as Bentley. Normally, before this technique was found, taking Ming vase as Bentley was already the fastest. But before, when it lost 34 and a half seconds, now it only loses 10.5, saving 24 seconds by just regarding this one treasure alone. Gotta note one thing though, with this treasure it's especially risky to experience a double death animation and that is something that you do not want to happen. So when taking this treasure one thing you really want to avoid is falling down to the pit, because that will cause you to lose the treasure. So, let's go over everything that has changed. Ming Vase, you take this treasure optimally after RC bombing run. After completing RC bombing run, take damage once, head to the treasure, throw a trigger bomb, and presto, you got it. That's all there is to it, and you will spawn back in the safe house, and the treasure is collected. Losing only 10 and a half seconds is such a great bargain that it just cannot be overlooked. And implementing it to the run was bound to happen with a bit of digging. But what else? Where else could this technique be used? In episode 3, there's a treasure called Crystal Flask, and it's located over here. Normally the fastest way to take this treasure would be a Sly after Water Bug Run, where it lost 27 seconds if you had unlimited amount of juice to spend on Stealth Slide and 33 seconds without any Stealth Slide. But for obscure reasons, you couldn't do the pause buffer menu setup for leading Rashan cutscene skip right afterwards. But now this treasure is fastest to take as Bentley since it only loses 23 seconds after blow the dam. So optimally you would take damage right before entering blow the dam job trigger and after the job you would go and run to the same tree, same mushroom that we use to get to the leading Roshan job trigger and then just run to the treasure and kill ourselves. Easy money. Then in episode 5 this technique actually does save time for Jeweled Crown. But this setup is kind of bonkers. Jeweled Crown has been in the route since 2019, and it normally loses 24 seconds to take as Murray after Tank Showdown. But with the Treasure Warp technique, it only loses 22, so it saves 2 seconds. And this is how it's done. So when going to the Tank Showdown chop trigger, you're gonna take damage from the spotlights once, It'll lose one second, but it saves three seconds in the next split. After completing Tank Showdown, turnbuckle launch up to the treasure platform, pick up both of the nearby TNT barrels individually, take damage from both of those, and then let the flashlight guard that always spawns there shoot you. Go next to the treasure, and when you see that the guard is about to shoot you again after your iframes go away, press circle button. Free. And even though the episode 6 treasure golden plate is not gonna be in the route, this technique also saves time for that treasure. Doing this as sly after a friend in need would lose 20 seconds, but in an old treasure run, this uh, spot in the run would be preserved for Alabaster Chalice to take, so instead an old treasure's run would take golden plate as Murray after bear cup kidnapping, where it would lose about 23 seconds on its own, but then you would have to back battle the train cycle when going to theft on the rails, which loses a few seconds more. And finally, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the episode 7 treasure, which has been Jade Decanter, and taking this treasure loses about 14 seconds to not taking it at all there. But now, it's faster to take either Collectible Plate or Jade Decanter. It basically does not matter which one you decide to take, time-wise. And you would take it as Murray after old Grizzle Face. This way an episode 7 treasure only loses 10 and a half seconds. The exact same time loss that occurs for Ming Vase. So what you would do is that you're gonna take damage between the second and third oil main. You're gonna be in position with low health, ready to throw the fish at the last oil main just as the old Grizzle Face destroys the third one. And after that you're just simply gonna run to 
either of those two treasures, it's a bit more viable to run to collectible plate, but the setup would not be that safe, and instead you have significantly less time to run the Jade Decanter, but at least there the setup is extremely safe. This setup would be kind of monka s for three and a half seconds, but it does save time, so that's something to think about. So there we go, so how do we build up a route from all this for Sly to any percent? I have two options for you. So first I thought about adding just Ming Vase to the route and getting early smoke bomb, which means smoke bomb for a friend in need, where smoke bomb saves like 15 seconds, and a faster gilded scepter, which would save 5.5 seconds in taking the treasure as Murray instead of Sly. So I thought about that first and it would save about 10 seconds. But then I did some recalculations and I realized that you could just swap Gilded Scepter to Crystal Flask to take as Bentley, so then there would be two Bentley treasures with this technique in the route, which saved a bit more time. So this route would just not take Gilded Scepter at all and instead take Crystal Flask. And this would save three seconds more. This is my first route pitch, but then it hit me. A long time ago, Hexu inquired me to look into an early smoke bomb route. Not just getting it for friend in need, but getting it already for episode 1. Because smoke bomb already does save 10 to 11 seconds in episode 1 operation in the Dimitri boss fight. And it technically saves 6.5 for theater pickpocketing cutscene skip, but this is kinda not viable for full game runs where you have to farm coins in Moonlight Rendezvous. And based on my calculations, this super early smoke bomb route would actually break even or be slightly faster than a crystal flask route that I demonstrated just a minute ago. It would take Ming Vase in episode 2, save pretty much all that time back in the Dimitri fight already, and then save time in a friend in need. On top of this, you could have smoke bomb for basically almost the entirety of the run. You could have it for lower the drawbridge, water bug run, spice grinder destruction, code capture, close to Contessa, stealing voices, and of course a friend in need where it actually does save time. But having smoke bomb as a backup for all these clutch jobs where you do not want to get spotted in the wrong places must be valued to some extent. Which means that I would be recommending the super early smoke bomb route instead. There's a one caveat to all this. It would require doing the infamous treasure swap strat in episode 5 and swapping the job order around to doing kidnap the general first in day 1. The treasure swap strat used to lose 1.5 seconds back in the days, but the strat Jake found a while back where you can pick up the treasure without jumping onto the treasure platform. It only loses about half a second to do these days, but that has never been the issue. The issue has always been that swapping the treasure for jeweled crown has lowered the timer of the treasure to 15 seconds. But I looked into this and optimally you can take this treasure back as sly in 13.8 which would leave 1.9 seconds room for errors for Sly, even without Stealth Slide. If you have preserved Stealth Slide for this section when you're going back to the safe house, this should not be an issue at all to take this treasure now. As Murray, it was clutch back in the days. And as Sly, it's already a lot easier, but with fair amount of Stealth Slide left for this section, it should not be an issue anymore, even with bad spotlight cycles. Even with one or maybe even two ledge grabs here and there. The only disappointing thing I see with this route is the fact that you would still have to take Gilded Scepter as Sly after Neela's Secret, which loses 32 seconds instead of the 23 that Crystal Flask would lose after Blow the Dam. So that's a 9 second difference right there. But the coin route just isn't flexible enough for that in order to get Turnbuckle already for a rip off the ruby. But the Crystal Flask can be used as a backup 
if you happened to fail the job late in either Follow Dimitri or Moonlight Rendezvous, aka in a marathon setting or a Sly Factor run. So let's say you fail job at the end of Follow Dimitri, okay, no worries, you're gonna do the section entirely again, farm over 100 coins extra, well, then you can just take Crystal Flask instead of uh, Gilded Scepter in episode 3 and save 9 seconds back from that. <clears throat> two minutes you lost. So the super early smoke bomb route would not bother with theater pickpocketing CSS and would instead buy smoke bomb with trigger bomb for disco demolitions. Then the route would just stay the same, just take Ming vase and that's it. And have smoke bomb. And do the swap strat, of course, so switch out the job orders in episode 5. So here's the rough estimations about what everything loses and what everything saves compared to the required gadgets only route which would only take one treasure in the entire game these days and would even do the super jump chain strat in follow dimitri so before i end before you go there's one more thing the cursed early ab route as we all know we could possibly buy adrenaline burst early already at the start of episode 4 and instead not take any late game treasures so no episode 7 treasure that's a possibility does it save time theoretically yes based on my stats it would save about four seconds up to four seconds but it, once again it realistically does not save time so i wouldn't bother with it this route would save a lot more if there was just somehow 50 coins more in the route, but then again, some other route combinations would also save more time. But the early AB, the absolutely cursed early AB route would take this treasure, golden scroll case, instead of this episode 7 treasure. And as you can see from these clips, the movement to this treasure optimally after Neela's secret would be just absolutely bonkers. Once again, these jumps are just not easy so realistically there already goes some amount of time and then the 31 and a half seconds from early ab includes this one really insane bomb boost that saves two seconds so yeah there we go early ab it's not happening so i should stop trying to make it happen but that's all i got for today i think that's the route to go with and uh, let me know your thoughts regarding this route down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that sellout stuff. And we'll see you with actual speedruns later. Quad Factor coming up soon. Bye.